Good morning. Today we will discuss about electric fuses. Coming to the last lecture, we have seen about the different types of lamps. We have seen incandescent lamps, we have seen fluorescent lamps, compact fluorescent lamps, LED lamps, and we have compared the futures of all these lamps and we have concluded that the future is all about LED lamps, right? So in today's class, we will discuss about what actually a fuse is, why do we need a fuse and what are the different types of fuses and which one we are supposed to use for a particular application. So now, I'll start with introduction of the fuse, what actually fuses and then I'll directly move on to the advantages and disadvantages of the fuses. So this will help you why a fuse is required. And next, desired properties of the fuse material. And finally, I'll go with the types of fuses along with their applications. And next later on, we will move on to exercises in the class. So let me start with uh, the introduction of the fuse. You might be hearing this word, particular word called as a fuse, right? So why it is generally used? It is normally used for protection of our equipment against external factors, electrical factors. What we call it as high voltage or high currents, whatever it might be. So in order to protect your device from these high currents, generally we use fuse. Now, I hope by the end of this lecture, you will be able to describe the need for fuse and list the type of fuses and their applications. So let me start with the fuse device. It is a device used in a circuit for protection of your equipment. It's not an electrical equipment, any equipment which you want to protect, which works on the part, electric part, against overloads and short circuits. So let us suppose if I do have any, I'll take this one as my equipment, which is to be protected. Normally I do provide it some sort of voltage, so it will be working. By some means or other means, let us suppose if heavy current is flowing in this one. If I exceeds I normal, then what happens? My equipment gets damaged. To overcome that one, I'll be using a small material here. I call it as a fuse and the, whenever the current is higher than the normal current then automatically it will blow off thereby protecting my equipment. This is the simple concept of application of fuse. So this fuse consists of a fuse element or a fuse wire which is a part of the fuse which melts when an excessive current flows through it and isolates a faulty device from the supply circuit. You can use these fuses for both low and high voltage circuits of moderate to high capacity where frequent operation is not exceeded. Why frequent operation I have mentioned that I will tell you in the next video lecture. Okay? Normally these are advised where frequent operations are not expected. So particular applications like protection of transformers, motors, lighting circuits, commercial buildings, there you will be using a fuse. And moreover, your fuse has an inverse time characteristic. So what actually is an inverse time characteristic? This is your inverse time characteristic. Fuse time, the time of operation of fuse and the fault current. If the fault current is low, then it may take a little bit longer time. But if the fault current is high, it will be acting immediately. So the characteristic will be inverse. So that's why we call it as an inverse time current characteristics. For lower values of fault currents, it may take some time, but for higher values of currents, it will react immediately. And for assuming it is normal value of current, then see, yeah, time might be infinite, which means it is not going to trip off. So, what actually it means? See, the greater the current flowing through the fuse, the smaller is the time taken. And the fuse is always connected in series with the equipment. So when the current is through the fuse above the normal, when the current through the fuse is above the normal value, maybe because of faulty equipment or maybe because of sudden inrush of voltage, then the fuse blows off, thereby isolating the equipment. 
when the current is interrupted see as i told you this will be my fuse material and this will be my low so fault may be happening here or maybe there is an excessive voltage also even if this goes higher even if this happens automatically the current may become greater than the normal value then automatically your fuse will blow up, thereby your system will be protected but if it is happening here for short circuit also the currents which you are drawing here this will be blown off thereby protecting your circuits now when suddenly this is blown off the current is suddenly interrupted right so what happens is sometimes an arc may appear an arc will appear so you are supposed to extinguish the arc otherwise it's no use of blowing a few fuse so you must take care that the arc is extinguished then air equipment will be protected okay so what are the advantages of the fuse it is the cheapest form of protection so far available so why that i'll explain in the next slides it is the cheapest form of protection and requires no maintenance just it blows off when there is a high current and again you need to replace it with some other material and it interrupts large currents without any noise flame gas or smoke but air will be appearing sometimes and if you don't extinguish then your equipment may get damaged and it does not require any other device to detect the faults just like here fault detection is generally done by relays so you don't need an additional relay to use the fuse and this characteristic inverse time characteristics can be enabled for overload protection and it limits a fault current due to cutoff okay but consider it on these three okay these four things this will help you a lot i'll be asking you mention at least two applications of fuse that is a cheapest form that requires no maintenance and it interrupts large currents and additionally it doesn't require any auxiliary device so what are the disadvantages with this one see when i am using a fuse here when it is blowing off which means that i am supposed to replace it i am supposed to buy a new one and i am supposed to replace this one or i am supposed to i'll show you different types of fuses you are supposed to replace the fuse once it gets blows off that is a disadvantage of a fuse see they must be replaced after operation and if you they are using multiple fuses in series then the selectivity of operation may not be proper that is one of the biggest problems with fuses but try to remember this one this is one of the biggest reasons why fuses are replaced now with circuit breakers you are supposed to replace it every time so for remote control it will be a little tougher task for us you can't always come again and replace it and again go back to our places if you are performing a remote operation so in that case fuses is not a good option and if your faults are occurring frequently then we cannot go for new things again and again and again so if it is a frequent operation also it is not suitable and as already said so your material must detect your this is your equipment your material must this is a fuse right it must detect faults if your current is greater than normal current so you identify the things so normally it must allow the current which means it must have a good conductivity the next thing is once your current goes above the normal value then it must act very fastly which means it must melt very fastly so it must have low melting point not the least melting point low melting point sufficient enough to withstand normal current but cannot withstand higher than normal currents and while it is burning out because it is 24 by hour kept so there must be no deterioration due to oxidation no deterioration no oxidation it must be stand still when there is no fault currents and during for normal currents itself it must not create any losses these two are linked low ohmic losses and besides all there is always a factor we call it as a cost factor it must be having very low price so these are the important things which you should remember 
while you are buying out a fuse elements while you are selecting a fuse material so what materials are used if you see the periodic table all some of the deep block elements they are used for fuse materials materials like lead tin copper zinc and silver these are the most used elements for fuse you see copper and silver are considered to be the best conducting materials these they do have low melting points so that's why we do take a mix of these things when based upon our requirements normally for currents less than 10 amperes we go with the combination of these combinations because you see tin or alloy of lead and zinc is used for larger currents we go with copper and silver because they are good conducting materials they provide us low ohmic losses so that's why we go with copper or silver to minimize ohmic losses so and if a time gap is required then zinc is the best option for us okay so now what are the important terms which are related to the fuse one is a current rating it is a current which the fuse element can withstand without melting what we call it as a normal current in our circuit beyond which a yeah, fuse material will be melted so it all depends upon the permissible temperature rise of the complex and the fusing currents it is the minimum value of current at which the fuse element melts there is a difference between these two this is the current rating this is a fusing current above fusing current automatically your material starts melting it is a little bit higher than your current rating so first comes a current rating this is a safe t1 which the fuse will allow for you and above it a little a little higher will be the fusing current okay and the ratio of these two fusing current to the current rating of the elements the ratio of these two is called as fusing factor we call it as fusing factor and there is one more thing we call it as a breaking capacity which is very similar to the current rating that is a maximum current which is safely interrupted by the fuse without burning out so try to remember these definitions current rating which a fuse element can carry without melting fusing current minimum value of current at which your material starts melting and the ratio of these two is called as fusing factor okay and now we will move on to 